So I bet some of you guys are wondering why I'm standing here at the end of a dead end road in front of my car. Well, stay tuned, we're gonna find out. So I figured it was about time that I do a quick episode for you guys and let you know how well my $900 Mercury Grand Marquis is holding up. Well, to be honest with you, 100%. I haven't had to spend an extra dime on this car since I bought it and initially did everything that I wanted to do to it. So you know that I went back and I adjusted all the brakes to get rid of that squishy pedal. I did that in this video right here. And then we did have that one trouble when I first lifted the vehicle and we had that loose right rear wheel, which I ended up replacing that whole axle, well, because I had a spare. So I almost think that might've been my own fault, not having that right rear wheel tightened up all the way. But nevertheless, I wanted to take a moment and uh, just kind of go over this car and where we are to date and uh, just let you know how well it's held up. And yes, Kip, I'm stealing that. So as you guys can see, this is not your typical 2003 Grand Marquis Ultimate Edition. This is a lifted 2003 Grand Marquis. And I get a lot of the questions in the comments as to why I lifted it and it's simple. I lifted it because it's different. And like I've said before, I get more questions, more thumbs up, more waves, more looks with this car, quite honestly, than I do old Dale the truck or my Cordoba. A couple of things that we are missing is we are missing some center caps for the wheels. I do have some of those on order and they should be here within a couple of weeks, hopefully uh, before the new year. But nevertheless, uh, I've also got the proper lug nuts that fit the lock on center caps that these cars would have had as a police cruiser. You can see I've got the color match grill with the fog lights in the middle. Those fog lights do only come on with the high beams and I got a little bit of that spray on tint on the uh, front lenses now it's not too dark uh, I can see just fine at night especially with the high beams and if you look up top we've also got the storage basket with the spare tire and lots of LED lights to light up the world now on the interior of the car there are a couple of things that are well just a few things that I've had to deal with nothing major nothing that I'm disappointed in but in typical fashion, somebody at some point has had this door panel apart and uh, that little clip that holds that in place is broken. Also, inside the door, something is loose. Every time I slam it, you can hear a little thunking. I'm sure you can hear that. The other thing with this car that I've noticed that the other car doesn't have is with the steering wheel controls that control the heater, they kind of contradict themselves. If I want to adjust the fan up and down, sometimes it won't do it. If I go and I wiggle the fan switch over here on the dash, well, it'll switch. Also, the temperature, you got to sit there and you got to beat on it two or three times. But I mean, after all, guys, this is a 17-year-old car. And some of these switches do get sticky after a while and they don't want to work the way they're supposed to. And surprisingly, since we've been into some really, really cold weather, my check engine light's gone out, and I'm not really sure what's up with that, but it's out. Somebody has cut the EGR tube off and blocked it. Uh, I've got the new tube, and uh, I will replace that at some point in time. Who knows? Maybe I'll never replace it. And as you guys know, we do have plans to do something to the motor. Now, I, I do have a turbo on its way that has been donated grac graciously from Luke over at Coastal Auto Reaction. I'm gonna leave a link to his uh, YouTube channel. Go on over and check him out. He's got lots of cool stuff going on over there. Um, so we do wanna put a turbo on it. My question is, is do I wanna put a turbo on this motor? If you guys joined us for the Christmas special of the Car Guy and Six Fan Show, you will know that we talked about different options as far as possible engine swaps uh, in our cars. And on this one here, being no different, I want to do something different, something that's gonna bring my channel to the forefront of YouTube that we think maybe nobody's ever seen before. So having said that, I'm not gonna spoil that, but nevertheless, we will be putting a turbo on this car, might be on this 4.6 liter V8, might be on something different. 
We are going to be doing some uh, big mods to this car. Uh, I want to do something, like I said, that's a little bit different, that's going to bring the channel to the forefront of YouTube, uh, meaning more views, uh, more subscribers, uh, and more support from viewers like you guys. Uh, really appreciate it that you guys are helping me grow this channel, and uh, you do it by liking, commenting, and clicking that subscribe button uh, as well as some of you guys have been buying up some t-shirts off of my Spreadshirt store. That link is in the description box below. So if you'd like to have one of these America t-shirts or maybe a Canada A t-shirt, go on in and check out my Spreadshirt store. There's bound to be something there for everyone. Let's get this thing on the road, take it for a drive, and we'll talk about just how well it handles with this five inch lift. So a couple of things that I have noticed about this car since putting the three inch lift and 31 inch tires on it giving it a five inch lift is that it has really two distinct driving styles one of them is when you're driving through town like i am some of the roads aren't great they're a little bit bumpy it rides almost like a stock grand marquee the rear end is probably the worst as far as the stiffness because you know we've got those struts or those uh, coil springs kind of pushed up there an extra three inches and they do tend to be a little stiffer not gonna lie but this car still drives like a dream boat that it was built to be the other style of driving that this car has is when you're out on the highway and it tends to get caught in the wind a little bit more because you're up there higher in the ground and it tends to react to the ruts in the highway where the big trucks you know drive and they they create little ruts in the tire treads and it wants to wander a bit other than that you still get that same floaty feeling because we are using 100 percent of the stock suspension on this car because all we did was put in spacers uh, for lifts now when it comes to performance one of the things that i found on this car with the stock rear gears those 273s is that it took an awful lot of effort to get this car up to speed keep in mind you've got these big 31 inch tires it takes a lot to turn them but ever since i put the 327 track lock in it it seems to work like stock meaning almost like the big tires aren't even on there as you guys saw in one of my previous videos i was able to do somewhat of a burnout almost zero effort at all the performance has improved it rides more like stock or sorry it performs more like stock from takeoff when you're out on the highway and you want to get up and go and pass somebody same thing uh, the shift points seem to be where they're supposed to be now and not laggy or stretching out because you're trying to turn those great big tires the other thing is as I mentioned in a previous video, is the speedometer on this car seems to be reading quite a bit more accurate. And that is a simple bonus for the fact that, well, I don't have to rely or calculate in my head how fast we're going down the highway. It's within about four or five kilometers an hour or three miles an hour, and almost not even something you wanna have to worry about. So you out on the highway, set the cruise control where you want, and you're only gonna be within a few kilometers or a few miles an hour of the actual speed you're going. Other than that, guys, I am extremely satisfied with the performance of this car, with the look of this car, and the handling. Everything is just as I would expect. I love this car. It's daily driven. I don't have any issues with it at all. The heater blows nice and hot. And in the spring, I may have to adjust the uh, AC. I have a feeling I know what's wrong with it. Uh, but the AC isn't currently working. We'll fix it. And uh, maybe by then, we'll have a different power plant under the hood that uh, may give us a lot more performance and be able to have a lot more fun. So we're just heading back to the shop now. I wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you guys a little bit about how business is doing at the shop. So uh, we'll be right there. So I did want to take a minute to just let you guys know how business is going here at the shop. And as you can see, we don't have a very lot, uh, large inventory right now, and that's because, well, it's Christmas time. And not much generally happens here around the car lot at Christmas time. Uh, we do have the occasional sale due to an accident or maybe a small Christmas gift, big Christmas gift for some people. But um, when we uh, first jumped into this whole COVID thing, we had no idea what to expect and things were looking pretty bleak. 
we went basically a whole month or better not selling any cars at all and uh, we did that one other time in August I believe where things were quite gloomy but with 2021 on the horizon and the fact that there seems to be a uh, vaccine out there we're hoping that that will be the step forward to the new normalcy uh, that we can kind of get things back in order get traveling again a little bit more freely get over to the u.s to visit our family and uh, just back to normal business to pick up and things to kind of boom again I wouldn't even look for a boom. I'd be happy with selling, you know, maybe a car or two a week. We haven't done that in a long time. So I don't want to sound like uh, things are really that bad because at the end of the day, the shop out back is keeping busy. And that seems to be the mainstay of what our business is these days. So ultimately the question is, were we forced to close? No, we weren't forced to close, but we did come very, very close. Uh, I think we'll be able to continue on for a little while longer and I appreciate everybody who comments uh, every time I do give an update on that that uh, they hope that we're going to continue to do really good business so I appreciate that as always stay focused on the windshield not the rearview mirror let's do it again real soon